in the depths of a Utah canyon, a weekend of bonding between two brothers turns into a nightmare. A simple mistake leaves one brother badly injured. It was the worst pain I'd ever felt in my life. Soaking, frozen and miles from the canyon's exit, the other has no choice but to find a way out, alone in the dark. It just continued to get worse and worse and worse. But in such perilous terrain, can he even escape, let alone bring help before the sub-zero conditions kill his injured brother? Southern Utah. This iconic western landscape is the result of 25 million years of sandstone erosion, which have left deep canyons littered with boulders and pools of freezing water. It's harsh and uninhabited, which is exactly why it appeals to experienced canyoneers like Justin and Jeremy Harris. Jeremy and I have um, shared a lot of experiences as we grew up as brothers. Justin's always been uh, an icon to me. He's always been someone that I looked up to. Canyoneering is a passion that the brothers have shared since they were seven years old. We can share things that brothers don't very often get time to share. Today they're going to tackle a remote canyon over 50 miles from the nearest town. We were looking for something that would be a new, new adventure, something that was going to be a little bit more challenging. They camp for the night and wake up to a freezing winter morning. Hey, little brother, wake up. What time is it? It's time to go. It had been a while since we'd been out on a hike, and November was, you know, it was, it was a little later than we wanted to go. It's freezing. We both had done quite a bit of winter hiking, so it wasn't something that was foreign to us, but it's definitely something that's going to complicate matters. You sure you're up for this today? I thought about that question, and I think, yeah, maybe part of me as, as his older brother thought that I needed to make the final say. Yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm up for it. They drove all this way, right? I made the decision that we were going to go for it that day. Justin! We started double checking all of our equipment, making sure that we had all of the hardware that we needed, that the ropes were ready to go. Our route was gonna head up towards the pinnacle and then drop down into Baptist Draw. Basically at that point, you know, it was like a little bit of kind of elation that we'd made the decision that we we're gonna go forward with this. As they race towards the canyon's entrance, it's Jeremy, the younger brother, who's at a disadvantage. As a child, he suffered from a debilitating hip condition that led to a full hip replacement when he was only 21. All of my growing up years, it was something that dictated what I was able to do and what I wasn't able to do. Hip acting up? It's never like the cold. Jeremy's really suffered, and I was always a little bit in awe of the fact that with his artificial hip, he would push himself, and he would find a trail, or he would find a new peak that he hadn't climbed yet. The brothers plan to follow a circular route. The descent into Upper Chute Canyon will take them 500 feet below the surface. To get back out, they must look for the side canyon at Chute Junction. We were headed down ledges and we were hopping from rock to rock and just kind of making our way. The trail notes say that the route should take about eight hours. The brothers know they need to complete it well before dark. The dangerous terrain and possibility of flash floods make a slot canyon no place to spend a night. Are we waiting? What? Are we waiting or what? I know, water looks way too cold. There's a technique where you put your back against one side of the wall and your feet against the other side of the wall and you kind of edge your way over the pools down below. 
as the canyon got a little bit more technical, it started taking us longer and longer to cover the ground that we needed to cover. I didn't get too concerned about the pace that we were making until, until we got to the rappel. Is this it? That's it. The drop is too steep just to scramble down. They'll need to use ropes. I could feel the cold wind blowing up into the canyon, and I was starting to get nervous at that point. Justin had not rappelled ever before, had, had never even put a harness on. How far down do you think that is? Six, 7,000 feet at least. You know, you're my least favorite brother. I know. It was a good drop. It wasn't something that you would survive if you fell from. See, it's nothing to worry about. I'm not worried. A little terrified, maybe. Not worried. You'll be fine. Jeffrey was getting quiet at that point, and I don't know if he was having some of the same thoughts I was having about uh, what was happening and how long it was taking us to, to do this. But I know that um, things got really, really serious for us. When my feet hit the bottom, it was like huge relief. I thought, hey, that, that really wasn't too bad. The scary element about technical canyoneering is once you go over a rappel, uh, unless you leave your climbing rope there, you have no way back out. You have no choice but to continue. The canyon has proven to be far more difficult than the brothers expected. They're now hours behind schedule. The tension was increasing, the pressure was on. We really needed to get a move on. Well, it wasn't more than 100 yards, and we ran into a huge chokestone. No, that's not on the trail notes. It becomes basically a barrier that uh, you need to climb up and over. Got some water. Ah. The last thing we wanted to do was, was uh, fall down into one of these pools and get wet. This looks pretty good. I think I can take this. Well, let me get back up there. I was confident that we could down climb it and not have any problem. Jeremy, wait! Ah! Jeremy! I remember when I heard that splash. That was the last thing that I wanted to hear at that point. Jeremy! 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 Are you okay? Are you okay? I can't believe I just did that. Hold on, Jim, I'm coming. Both hypothermia and frostbite were, were a major concern. Um, it's the end of November and it's in Utah. Um, I don't know exactly what the temperature was during the day, but it was, it was well below freezing. Freezing? There's no way we're climbing out of here. Just double time the rest of the canyon. Get back to camp. Dusk is just three hours away and the temperature's dropping fast. Justin and Jeremy will have to move even quicker now if they're to have any chance of getting out of the canyon before dark. More fire. Right I think we were even in a, in a bigger hurry after that happened. I know I definitely was. Oh. All right. Now the weather, which has been deteriorating all day, takes a dramatic turn for the worse. It 
probably wasn't 10, 15 minutes before there was maybe an inch of snow. It was very cold. And then we hit another big chokestone. I remember looking down over the back of it and looking at that pool and thinking, oh, great, water again. You think this canyon has something against us, do you? Yeah. I think it might just. It was a very tricky down climb, even though it wasn't far. There were very few handholds and very few uh, places to stand on the way down. And uh, footing was a little slippery because of the snow. Oh, I'm glad you were there. And I remember just holding on to his hand because that was the firmest thing that I had to hold on to. Okay. I remember feeling a, a shift in his movement and uh, believing he was going to jump to the floor because it really wasn't that far. I let go. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm basically fallen. Justin! I knew without a doubt I had just broken my leg. And all I could do was scream. It was the worst pain I'd ever felt in my life. I, I had never quite heard someone scream in pain like that. It was a really helpless feeling to, to hear him scream like that in pain and not be able to do anything for him. Just take it easy, brother. Stop it up and help me. Take it out of the water. And I could really feel how bad he was hurt. It was very obvious that, uh, that there were things in places where they shouldn't be. It's really bad, Justin. Justin's shin bone is shattered in six places. Internal bleeding is already restricting blood flow to other parts of his body. They don't know it, but this injury could kill him. Okay. What time is it? I remember thinking that my brother has an artificial hip. He can't carry me out. I can't walk out. I can't crawl out. And I'm, I'm stuck here. We're going to get through this. You think? We're gonna make if it I was going to get out of there, it was going to be up to Jeremy. That was really hard to. Uh to be the one to take charge because forever before, he was the person that I would look to when I didn't know what to do. Well, five hour check back to the car. When I looked in Jeremy's eyes, I could tell just how scared he was. It's really bad. You got maybe, maybe, maybe an hour of light. I was gonna leave him there and, and hike out, which is really hard to do for the fact that, one, it's my brother that I know and love very much, and two, that real soon I'm gonna be by myself. Okay, you're gonna have to move me. Up against the wall, out of the wind. You ready? You just do it, do it! I think both of us knew just how serious of a situation we were in. Justin's in real danger. Between his injured leg and the freezing temperatures, his chances of survival decrease with every passing hour. Jeremy needs to move on. It's another four miles to the side canyon exit, and the light is fading fast. That's the side canyon there, right? I'll just crow's nest it up here, double time it back to the car, okay. call for help. I just, Get it. I just take it one step at a time. How are you feeling? Good, considering I'd never been this scared. When we started divvying things out and going through the backpack, we came across my camera. And uh, one of the last things that we did was take a picture of each other because 
I, I remember saying, well, we better take a picture of each other if we don't ever see each other again. I thought that maybe I might never see him again. And those things, yeah, those things go through your head. Am I right? What are they saying about you? Me and my least favorite brother. I never liked you much either. I'm so far. <laughs> Be careful. Okay. I could see him for a while before he went out of sight. And I, I remember telling him, think happy thoughts. <laughs> and, uh, and you can do it. According to the trail notes, Jeremy should be out of the canyon in four hours. But so far, the route has proven more difficult and far slower than expected. I think we were both pretty confident that I was going to be out soon and I could call someone and uh, we'd get him out of that canyon. Um, <laughs> had no idea what, what was really going to happen. <laughs> but Jeremy can't find the side turning that will lead him back out of the canyon to the car. And he's running out of daylight. When it went from light to dark, it was so hard to conceive how far I'd gone. But I kept thinking that I had gone too far. And I ran into pools. and lots of them. At that point, I didn't have a, a choice whether I was gonna get wet or not. What I was looking for was the last canyon that would take me back to near where we started. And I had these trail notes in, in a pocket on the side of my leg, which was open. It was unzipped and didn't realize that. I looked down and watched water wash into that pocket and wash my trail notes out. It's so murky and so muddy, you can't see anything in it. But just probing through the water with my hands, trying to find it, I, I couldn't find it. So I continued on. It's been five hours since Jeremy left his brother, and there's still no sign of the side canyon. The sense of time was um, kind of messed up for me. But as I'm sitting there freezing to death and trying to stay alive, you can't help but think that we may have uh, been a lot better off uh, going golfing that weekend. And then I hear little scratching noises, what sounds like something's fidgeting around. And it's completely dark and I can't see anything. Hey. <laughs> As soon as I located this little guy, it was kind of great to have somebody there with me, even if it was a little mouse. A nut? A raisin? A freeze bread banana? Get some of that in here. You look like a nut kind of guy to me. Well, personally, I prefer the raisins. We kind of became pals there for a little while. <laughs> and then he, he scurried off. I was almost sad to see him go. <laughs> Jeremy has now been searching for the side canyon exit for more than nine hours. 
when you're in a pool of water that's that cold and you're having to put out that much energy, it's, it's exhausting. He is disoriented by the darkness, wet and freezing cold. The physical and mental punishment is becoming unbearable. The whole time it, it had seemed as if it cannot get worse than this. And it just continued to get worse and worse and worse. It was so cold outside that I wasn't really wet, uh, more like frozen. And I would have these clods of ice that would build up that I would have to break off in order to just continue moving. Jeremy is close to collapse. He desperately needs to rest and dry out. I decided it was time to rest. And there was uh, driftwood that looked dry and built a very large fire, <laughs> a fire that's about four times the size as uh, I would normally build. It was so cold that I had to be so close to the fire to get warmth from it. Almost had to lay in it. I just wanted to feel dry for a minute. And at the same time, it was very hard to do. I felt really guilty uh, stopping and building a fire. More guilty than I'd ever felt before. <laughs> Jeremy needs to get going again as soon as he can, but exhaustion gets the better of him, and before he knows it, he's passed out next to the fire. Deep in the canyon, Justin is beginning to realize just how badly his leg is hurt. I start feeling this um, interesting sensation, and I haven't checked on my leg in a while, but it feels like maybe I'm bleeding. I'm looking at it and I'm seeing, I'm seeing these blisters, these huge blisters that are coming to the surface on my leg. They're rupturing and the fluid is running down my leg. And the swelling has gotten a lot worse. And I didn't know exactly what to make of this. I knew it couldn't be good. Swelling in Justin's broken leg has created so much pressure that blood fluids have burst the veins and capillaries to create fracture blisters. If infection sets in, Justin could lose his leg. everything, burnt my pants and burnt my jacket, but thankfully didn't start on fire myself. So I put myself together and, and headed back to, to where I'd left off. Jeremy should have been out of the canyon by now, but in the dark and without trail notes, he has missed the side canyon exit. Now his every step takes him further away from civilization and any hope of rescue for his brother. Justin is starting to succumb to the effects of immobility and bitter cold. He can feel himself slipping into unconsciousness. I know that if I, if I fall asleep, if I get too comfortable, I might not wake up. And I'm thinking, I have to come up with something that's gonna keep me sharp that's going to keep me from going into shock. And so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about my family, my wife and my four children. And the thought comes to me, just repeat over and over again their names and their birth dates. Madison Patricia Harris. April 5th. 2000. Tanner Justin Harris. July 28, 1996. 
Mackenzie Susan Harris. Mackenzie Susan Harris. Harris. May 1st, 1995. 1995. Uh, and my oldest boy, Skylar Christopher Harris. Skylar Christopher Harris, December 3rd. And I knew if I can do this a hundred times and I don't get anything wrong and I don't forget what I'm doing, that I'm doing okay. <sighs> Deep inside the canyon, Jeremy hits a series of sharp drops and for the first time realizes that he is completely lost. I'm going the wrong way. There were definitely points that made me strongly question that I was not in the right place. Maybe I veered off. Jeremy's exhaustion is adding to his confusion. Instead of listening to his instincts, he plows on getting further and further from the canyon's only exit. Something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. And I hadn't seen my side canyon. And the terrain is getting worse and worse. In daylight, this climb would be a challenge. In the dark, it's practically suicidal. Mackenzie Susan Harris. Mackenzie hmm. Susan Harris. May, uh, May 1st, uh, 1995. Skyler Christopher Harris. Uh, December. December 3rd. Patricia. Patricia I got stuck. And all of a sudden, I realized that one of my worst fears is happening, that uh, I might be starting to lose grip on the situation. And that really scared me. And so as painful as it was, I pretty much forced myself to stand up and endure some pain to try and get my system in check. Pain would just shot right up in through my nerves, right up into my knee. It was terrible, um, but, it, but it woke me up. The way I'm going, that's the way. The state of mind that I was in was really insane. How do you know that? Really emotional. Don't. I didn't feel like I was talking to God. You sure this is the right way? But I had to talk to somebody. I'm going the wrong way. You know, I'd be have moments consumed by negative thoughts. What if Justin hasn't made it? You know, why is he sitting there and not me? I'm out there, and it seems like it's been forever since Jeremy's left. And ever so subtly, I start to see changes in the light. And high above me, it looks maybe a little bit differently. And unless I'm hallucinating at this point, unless I'm starting to see things, I probably made it through the night. It was almost like a, a new awakening. It was a, it was a new day, and I was I was never so glad to see the sun come up. Jeremy has somehow survived the series of perilous climbs, but tragically, he still hasn't realized he's been going in the wrong direction for almost half the night. And uh, I came to another uh, area that was a choke in the canyon and walked up on top of it and it was about 60 feet to the bottom. I didn't have a rope or a harness and my thought was jump in. Bad idea. Yeah. I was gonna jump off the top of this into this pool. Jeremy is so exhausted that it's affecting his judgment. There is no chance that he will survive this jump. Jump it, jump it, jump it. picked up this uh, rock and threw it off. I remember watching that rock fall through the air and hit the pool. I instantly, my, my mind switched. 
I was like, no, what are you, what are you thinking? That's, that's impossible, that's ridiculous. I don't know how much more this I can take. Immediately, my thoughts reversed and my plan changed to go back to Justin. It's a dead end. All that Jeremy wants to do now is get back to his brother. Ironically, for the first time in almost 12 hours, he's going the right way. And then I realized what it was going to take to get back there. He's got to climb back up the cliffs that last night he risked his life scrambling down. It was literally having to do the impossible. For Justin, daylight brings a new sense of hope that rescue is on its way. I could see the, the sunlight on the cliffs above me changing, and it's getting closer to me. And it's warming up a little bit. For the first time since I had been out there, it was, it was almost, almost uh, bearable. And I'm sitting there, you know, going through the hours and the calculations in my mind, and, and I'm, I, I'm feeling really good about where I'm at and I'm feeling great about where Jeremy's at. I'm thinking in my mind that he's, he's probably back to camp and he's got help coming and I'm gonna get out of here and I'm gonna have one heck of a story to tell. And hopefully my wife won't kill me when I get home. And I'm laying there and I'm just about as relaxed as I've been the whole time. And, and then the sun goes away. Jeremy has now been climbing through the canyon for over 24 hours. He's exhausted, but driven on by a single thought, to get back to his brother. Climbing up and taking so much energy, getting part of the way or most of the way up. I, I had never felt so drained. It was extremely hard to climb. Some of the hardest things that I've ever had to climb up in my life. I'm thinking that by now I should have seen somebody. I had to accept the fact that as positive as I was about the situation and as hopeful as I was about my situation, that it wasn't looking really good for Jeremy. And now it wasn't looking really good for me. Looking back on it, climbing up these, uh, these poor offs, what I remember of it, maybe faced with knowing that it was impossible, I was able to find strength inside me somewhere and abilities that I didn't believe I had or existed. It's strange to think about and I truly don't know how, but I made it. <clears throat> Jeremy? Jeremy! I'm thinking about my brother out there somewhere, and I'm picturing him 
frozen somewhere because it's too cold and and he just can't make it. <laughs> and I'm starting to lose hope. <laughs> and I started to think that maybe he was dead. But as Justin struggles with his fears, miles down the canyon, Jeremy is suddenly confronted by his terrible mistake. He stumbles across the side canyon exit. Disoriented by the darkness, he simply missed it the night before. It was so obvious. I, I, I can't conceive how I would have missed it other than just the state of mind that I was in. I definitely should have seen it. <laughs> Finally, Jeremy has a chance of escaping from the canyon and getting help for his brother. <laughs> the brother's camp should be 20 minutes from the side canyon exit. But after two hours of searching, he still can't find it. I really wasn't sure where camp was at. My tent has a yellow rain fly over it, a bright yellow rain fly. And Justin's car is, is, is red. And off in the distance, I saw red and yellow, and I saw it as clear as day. And literally dropped to my knees and was so thankful that I was back. <laughs> and I'm on my knees and I look up and it wasn't there. I wasn't seeing what I thought I saw. It was kind of <laughs> just a, the roller coaster ride continuing. <laughs> Jeremy may be out of the main canyon, but he cannot find the trail back to his camp, and in just two hours, the sun will set. At the bottom of the canyon, Justin's battle for survival has become one of sheer will and faith in his brother. I knew he would do everything that he possibly could to get out of that canyon and to get help in for me. I knew he wouldn't give up, no matter what. It's uh, really hard to convey to someone how exhausted I was. I I'd gone so far beyond what I had imagined my limits were. I wasn't sure whether I should believe that it was really there or not. approached it and it really was. I hadn't really even thought about my own physical condition. I was a wreck and uh, kind of amazed at the fact that I was even alive. It should have taken Jeremy just five hours to reach their camp. Getting lost means it's taken over 26. I, I open the car and grab his cell phone and it's dead plug it into the car lighter uh, to get some power and wait a minute. After the superhuman effort that Jeremy has made to escape the canyon, he faces a final cruel twist of fate. I couldn't get any service. I remember holding the, the phone up over the, the top of the car and couldn't get a signal. As Jeremy tries to get through to help, Justin is struggling just to get from one hour to the next. All you want to do is lay down and just, just go to sleep for a little while. And I thought about just how easy that would be. And I'm hoping that I can go through another hour. I can get through two hours and then you get through that hour and, and time passes. Justin is beginning to realize that he faces another night in the canyon, a night he does not expect to survive.
As the sun rises after a second night exposed to sub-zero temperatures and with no idea if his brother is alive or dead, Justin knows he cannot survive much longer. Oh. 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 Hey. And then all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I, I see a face pop around this boulder. And I think we were probably both um, pretty surprised to see each other. Justin, we see you. He's right over there. Face, we found him. And it was like, you know, they're here. They made it. They made it down. It was wonderful. When I first got to Justin, just looking at him, I thought, boy, he's doing pretty good. Well, aside from that, shivering, right, I'm okay. Shivering, it means that he is maintaining his core temperature on his own, so that was a good sign to me. My brother, Jeremy, where is he? He needed some medical attention. Why, what happened? No, he just, uh got into a little disagreement with the canyon over who was tougher. But he's gonna be okay. I was overcome with emotion. For the first time, I knew that, that you know, he was out for sure. And I'm getting out of here now. All right, let's take a look at that leg. I uh, cut up his pant leg just enough to expose his, the injury where his leg was, and it just totally took me by surprise. As soon as I saw his leg, I knew that we had a very serious situation. Although Justin seems okay, toxins and poisons have built up in his shattered leg to such a degree that moving him risks releasing them into his system. <laughs> When your blood doesn't circulate down through your body continuously, acids build up in your body. And um, if they are rapidly released back into the system, they'll go to your heart and it'll kill you. I really thought at that time, he has a really high potential of losing his leg, but even more so of losing his life. <laughs> How bad is it? I'm gonna get you some morphine before we move you. At that point, I knew that it really was bad. I need to get my patient out of here right now. And I was probably a lot worse off than I thought I was. Yeah, thanks. And that was kind of a tough pill to swallow. Good to go. I'm laying flat on my back, and uh, you know, for the first time, I'm getting a pretty good view of the canyon that we we came down to see, and and so I'm kind of looking around, and it's it is a, you know, it's a nice canyon. When we finally got up over the lip of the canyon wall. All I could see was a bunch of faces that I didn't know. And they were all looking at me and smiling. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. You do great. Thank you, guys. Hey, Justin, would you like to speak to your wife? <laughs> I, says, I says, yeah. Yeah, I want to talk to her. Trish? And Trisha says, hey, are you okay? And I says, yeah, yeah, I'm alive. I love you and I'm alive. Jeremy and Justin are finally reunited in hospital in Salt Lake City. And I remember thinking he's just gonna go into surgery and they're gonna fix his leg. And he's gonna be just fine and... And that's far from the truth. 
Justin spent 90 days in the hospital and endured 13 operations. Despite all their efforts, the doctors were unable to save his leg. It was too much to, uh, too much to bear. I still felt so guilty. Jeremy and I lived through something that, that we shouldn't have. And the, the, experience of, the experience of going through that with someone is powerful. I think uh, just being born of the same mother doesn't make you brothers. And the term brother is a very sacred term to me. And uh, Justin's definitely my brother. Neither Justin nor Jeremy has ever gone canyoneering again. But their bond as brothers is closer than ever since they survived that terrible weekend.